Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to the Hive. In this video, we're taking a look at this Akara E1 Zigbee roller shade driver. We'll take a look at the outside of the box, get it out of the box and get it installed with the roller blind that we want to control. And then we'll get it paired up using ZHA on Home Assistant. So while I roll the intro, why don't you take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified when I release new videos, which is normally each week. While you are at it, if you like what I do here and you want to support the channel, there's affiliate links to smart home gadgets that you can buy for your very own smart home, including the Akara E1 Smart Roller Blind controller. And that will help you to support the channel without costing you any extra while also automating your blinds. Or you can support the channel directly through my buy me a coffee link. Of course, those affiliate links and my buy me a coffee link can also be found on my website, hivemindautomation.com.au. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. So over the Christmas break, my partner and I decided to turn the spare room into a second home office so that we're not in the background of each other's meetings when we are working from home, or so one of us doesn't have to leave the room to take meetings all the time. The spare room is on the north side of the house with a north facing window. And being summer currently in the Southern hemisphere, that window does get full sun for most of the day. To help control both heat and light in the office, we've already got curtains, but they didn't fully block out all of the light, so we decided to also install a roller blind on the inside of the window frame to help block out even more heat and light. Now, I previously reviewed the IKEA Fiatur Smart Blind, and I thought that they were great, but unfortunately they don't come in sizes that are suitable for most Australian standard sized windows. So we ended up heading over to Bunnings, also known as Hammer Barn if you are a Bluey fan, and we picked up a perfectly sized roller blind with a chain controller and we installed it into the window frame. It does a fantastic job of blocking out the light and we were presented now with a new opportunity to automate part of the house. So we picked up this Akara E1 roller shade driver. We paid 119 Australian dollars on Amazon, but at the time of writing, there's a deal on this unit for $97, and I will be putting an affiliate link in the video description if you want to pick one up for yourself. Now, in terms of prerequisites, this one should be fairly basic. If you want to make use of all of the native functionality, though, you are going to need to have one of the Akara hubs. Because it's a Zigbee device, though, I'm going to be pairing it to Home Assistant using ZHA. Now, obviously, for ZHA integration, you're going to need a Zigbee controller like the Silicon Labs controller that's built into Home Assistant Yellow or a suitable USB Zigbee controller like the Home Assistant Sky Connect, a Combi stick or a Nortec stick, which I've reviewed all of those in the past. So let's head over to the unboxing bench now for a look at the outside of the box. On the front, a Cara, an image of the driver unit, roller shade driver E1, voice control via Apple Siri, Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, and more is supported. A Cara hub is required. On the left, the roller shade driver E1 makes your existing roller shade smart, and that's there in multiple languages. On the right, long battery life, easy installation, app control, automation support, and there's an asterisk there, user-defined opening and closing, one button control, and the asterisk for automation support says with the Akara Home app, it can be controlled by other Akara smart home devices, such as wireless switches or the Akara Cube. There's nothing on the top, just a tab for a hang cell. On the bottom, we have roller shade driver E1. The model number is RSDM01. Wireless protocol is Zigbee 3.0. The dimensions are 43 by 38 by 175 millimeters. Total power consumption is five watts. What's in the box? A roller shade driver, screws, expansion tubes, double-sided tape, spare rotating plates, a USB-C to USB-A cable. The standby time is two months. The battery type is lithium, not replaceable. Rated input is five volts at one amp. Operating temperature and humidity ranges made in China. 
and some compliance logos there and some recycling information in French as well. Lastly, on the back, and apologies for this shot, I managed to forget to take it when I first shot the around the box video, but I've got a still here. Akara's easiest to use roller shade controller, the Roller Shade Driver E1, controls your existing roller shade automatically. Easy installation. If sunshine is too strong, the roller shade will unroll automatically. When the sunshine is too bright in the afternoon, it is detected by the M1S hub's built in illumination sensor and the roller shade will unroll automatically, making you more comfortable. In the evening, the roller shade will open automatically when the motion sensor detects that you are back home. And that's in a combination with this roller shade driver, an Akara Hub M1S, and a motion sensor. There's some copyright information in the bottom left, and to work with Apple HomeKit, Amazon Alexa, and Google Assistant, an Akara Hub is required. Visit akara.com slash support for more details. There's some manufacturer details in the bottom right and the Zigbee certified logo in the extreme bottom right there. Now let's get it out of the box. Using my razor, I had to cut the sticky dot on the front bottom edge. After flipping open the box right on top, we've got a card with Australia, New Zealand warranty information and the terms and conditions of the warranty there as well. There's a surprisingly thick instruction booklet, but it becomes less surprising when we realize that it's the same thing in nine different languages. The driver itself is inside this biodegradable plastic bag, and it feels like it's good build quality. There's up and down tactile buttons on the front, and we can slide the back mounting plate out to expose some specs and an install code. On the bottom, there's a reset button and a USB type C port for charging. And if we slide this cover off, we expose the driver wheel. Back to the box again, lifting up this flap, we've got some screws and wall plugs, which I think were listed on the box as expansion tubes in this little baggie here. The USB Type-C to Type-A cable. I checked the length of this cable off camera and it's around two meters long, just shy of seven feet in freedom units. So there's a good length on there if you plan to charge it in situ. We also have these three spare driver wheels, each with a different profile to grab different profiles of uh, drive chain. And lastly, hiding in here is some 3M VHB tape cut to fit the back of the mount plate. Now I was curious about the drive wheels, so I slipped the installed one off and it took a fair amount of force to wiggle it off the shaft of the motor. But you might be able to see here that it's just a shaft with a flat milled on one edge to key into the driver wheels and you can just pull one of them off and press the correct one on. So that's all the hardware that came in the box. Let's go ahead and get it installed in the window. Before we do that though, the Train and Hobby Show is back for 2024, running in just a couple of short weeks on the 16th and 17th of March at Sandown Racecourse and Entertainment Centre. We'll have makers and arts and crafts, model railways, radio controlled models, ham radio and electronics, computing and home automation, and for the very first time this year, we've also got trading cards and pop culture at the Train and Hobby Show. I'll be at the Train and Hobby Show again for 2024, showcasing smart home gadgets and home automation using Home Assistant. Tickets are available on the website and it's sure to be a great family day out. If you want to come along, head over to the website trainandhobbyshow.com.au. That's T R A I N A N D H O B B Y S H O W.com.au. And now back to the Akara E1. Now, before we pair the unit to ZHA, I want to get it installed onto the roller blind chain. There's a few steps here. Now, I first had to figure out roughly where I wanted to mount the driver. And because the chain was too long, even for the window frame, I ended up having to cut it down and using the joiner that came with the blind to then join the chain back together. If you need to do this for your blind, don't make the mistake that I did and put the joiner at the bottom of the chain when it is open. Put it as close as possible to the top where it's going to then roll away from the roller mechanism as you close the blind so that it doesn't end up jamming up the roller mechanism at the top of the blind there. With the chain at the right length, I can then check the fit of the chain into the drive wheel, including the joiner here, to make sure that it's going to work for me. 
You can see here in my case that the beads and the joiner have a really good positive grip into the wheel. With the unit hanging from the chain, I can then mark the bottom position of the unit and then take the backing plate off, position it and mark the holes for the backing plate. The instructions suggest drilling a five millimeter pilot hole and then using the wall plugs but I'm going into a timber window frame here, so I'm just drilling a much smaller pilot hole and putting the screws straight into the timber. If this is the wrong thing to do, by all means, let me know in the comments section. But in my mind, at least, I think that this is going to work just fine. With the mounting plate now in place, I get the chain into the drive wheel and then clip the driver onto the mount plate. Now, in my case, I did mount the unit a couple of millimeters lower than I probably should have, which means that there's a fair bit more tension on the chain than it is ideal, but it still seems to work perfectly fine. I'm not too worried about it just now. If I need to, I can adjust that later. With the driver mounted, we can then snap off the relevant legs from the wheel cover and then slip it over the drive wheel cover to cover it up and keep fingers out of the mechanism here. While testing the up and down motion of the driver and trying to set the limits, I discovered my mistake with the chain joiner. So we ended up having to take the blind out of the window frame and adjust the position of the chain so it wouldn't foul in the roller mechanism. This has nothing to do with the Akara E1 driver and everything to do with the position of the joiner on the chain when it runs over the top in the blind. Once we'd fixed that positioning of the chain, we were able to then mount everything back in the window frame and then go through the process of setting the limits. To set the open and close limits for the controller, we press and hold both the up and down buttons until we see the blue indicator LED between the two buttons flash. Then we can set the open position using the up or down arrows until we get the right position. And once we're happy with the open position, we can then press the up arrow five times. The indicator light will flash three times to show that it's stored that setting. With the open setting stored, we can now adjust the blind to our closed position, again using the up and down button. When we're happy with the closed position, we can press the down button five times and the indicator light will again flash to show that the position is stored. I'll cycle it through the up and down motions a couple of times just to make sure that it's moving freely. It did labor a little bit as the chain joiner ran through the drive wheel for the first couple of times, but it does seem to get better after a couple of runs there. Now, because we've mounted it a couple of inches from the bottom of the frame, there's also plenty of room for us to plug the USB Type-C charging cable in for charging when we need it to. So now we move on to the pairing of the unit with ZHA in Home Assistant. Now I'm going to be doing this in production instance, which is running on my Home Assistant Yellow. We'll head over to our settings menu and then devices and services. Scroll all the way to the bottom to find Zigbee Home Automation. I'll drill in there and then click on the 25 devices link. And then I'll click on the add device in the bottom right hand corner. ZHA is now searching for a Zigbee device. So I now need to go and put the driver unit into pairing mode. To do that, I need to press and hold the reset button on the bottom for five seconds. Now I was worried that when I did this, it was going to reset my open and close positions, but it turns out that it didn't. Those positions were still there and I tested that a bit later on. After holding the button for five seconds, a light came on on the unit and then the Zigbee interview began just a moment later. The Zigbee interview took Took a little bit longer than I've seen from other Zigbee interviews uh, and it sat on this interview complete configuring status for quite a while. I did get a little bit worried but eventually it got to initialization complete. The device is ready to use and then I was able to change the name to Ben's Office Roller Blind and the Home Assistant area to Ben's office. Hovering over the different sensors it, that it exposes, we can see that we get a bunch of sensors, including the battery state and the device temperature, which is helpful. So now that it's paired, if I click on the battery sensor, for example, we can see some stats and attributes here. Though I don't believe that this unit is running a single CR2032 battery, and the status does currently show as unknown. However, that updated a bit later on. What I do want to do here when we are in the battery status though is hit the three dot stack menu up in the top right hand corner 
and then hit device info, which is then going to take me to the device page in Home Assistant, where I can then see all of the controls, configurations, and diagnostic sensors. There's two diagnostic sensors that are hidden by default, and those are the Zigbee LQI and RSSI sensors. There's some interesting sensors in here as well, like the window covering type, which just shows as drapery, and there's no way to change that from within Home Assistant, so not entirely sure the point of this particular sensor, but it is there. We have an identify button, which should just uh, cause the indicator LED on the unit itself to flash. And we already mentioned the temperature and battery state. At the moment, those are showing completely the wrong data, but after some time, these updated to show the correct data. I noticed here that there is a number slider for positional adjustment, which when I set it to 100, it did nothing. And the reason for that is the blind was already open. I did test this off camera and I can set this to any number between zero and 100 to define how open we want the blind. So we could reasonably then set up some automations to change the position of the blind throughout the day to make sure that it's in the right spot. I did also get a bit confused by this number slider while, but while reviewing the footage, I did notice that when I press the buttons on the unit itself, Home Assistant becomes aware of those triggers as well. When I do press those buttons, it's not providing any live position feedback, just presenting where the device is trying to move to. Obviously the main controls here are the open, stop and close next to the cover control. If the blind is open and I hit close, it responds pretty quickly and it started closing the blind perfectly fine. I then adjusted my B camera here and then ran some more opening and closing tests from Home Assistant and everything's working great. We're really, really pleased with the results from this Acara Roller Shade Driver E1. The only thing left to do now is to then add these blind controls to the dashboard that I've set up for my partner's office so that the controls are readily available and easy to use from that dashboard. So that's the Acara E1 Zigbee Roller Shade Driver. It's a great little unit that makes automating the blinds in that north facing office a breeze. We'll see how it goes over the next few weeks, but I think it's very likely that we'll be installing an identical blind and another one of these in the south facing office, which is my office as well. There's also other windows around the house that we might decide to install roller blinds in as well for better block out behind the curtains. Installation was really easy despite my thankfully correctable mistake with the placement of the chain joiner. The only thing that I can see here is that the price might be a little bit hard to justify if you're looking to automate a lot of roller blinds. But to be perfectly honest, I think there's far worse options at a worse price point out there. The fact that there's a Zigbee also mean that if you are able to find a way to mount it to your window frame securely with some kind of non-destructive double-sided tape, without then needing to also shorten the chain, it's also theoretically rental friendly. The ZHA integration was super simple to set up and it's also really, really responsive, which is fantastic. I do still need to pass it through to Amazon and HomeKit to make it work with our voice assistant, uh, but I'll do those off camera. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. That's all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your home automation and smart home journey. Be sure to drop a comment down below with home automation ideas that you'd like to see me cover in the future video. And don't forget to follow Hivemind Automation on Instagram and Facebook. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, now's a great time to change that. While you're at it, if you hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button, you'll get a notification when I release a new video, and that's normally each week. Lastly, if you enjoy what I do here and you want to support the channel, there's a buy me a coffee link in the video description. Any contribution you make through buy me a coffee does get put towards making more and hopefully better content for you to enjoy. Don't forget to check out my website, hivemindautomation.com.au. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.